Hey guys, it's Tony from Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to take a look at the Fractal North XL. Now this case is going to come in around the £170-£175 pound mark. Uh, I'm assuming that is the one with the uh, mesh anyway, which is the one that I've got. I'm going to say right from the get-go, I wish they'd sent me the glass one, but at least with the mesh it means I can show you the extra fan mount and stuff but if it was me personally just need to get out of the way i would have had the tempered glass now the north xl big case loads of airflow but still has this lovely wooden front on it which gives it a real kind of grown-up nordic vibe uh, i don't want to say an ikea vibe because i think that would be doing it a misjustice in quality um, but it does just have that scandinavian kind of beauty about it and it does stand them out a fair bit at the moment Anyway, we do need to get into the thick of it and then we'll wrap up right at the end with all of the conclusions and performance testing and all that sort of stuff. If you do like the video though, I never say it early enough, please like, subscribe, but most importantly, comment. If you think it's good, let me know. If you think it's bad, also let me know because constructive criticism can help us all grow as long as we're not keyboard warriors about it. Now, I always start at the top and at the front. We have a very blatant power button, separate headphone and microphone, couple of USB A3.2 uh, Gen 1s and then a USB uh, C, which is all nice. This front section is separate from the roof panel, which you can see if I pull it back, but the roof panel, it just slides. You've got like this little leatherette tab here to be able to remove it and the roof panel comes off. There's no extra meshing or anything inside does have the support brace. Uh, one of the things that is kind of nice is it's actually kind of easy to take the mesh off the top if you wanted to uh, get your mod on. Uh, but anyway, in the roof, you can see that we have a large offset radiator mount here. Now, up to a 360 millimeter radiator in the roof, which does mean you can put 280 in there if you want, uh, because it does fit uh, 140 millimeter fans, but due to the size restrictions, it's only up to two 140s, but you can do uh, three 120s. Does have this nice little hole here, so if your fan cables are over the top, you can still poke it uh, down and through. Um, but there's no direct route into the uh, back panel. That's one of the things to keep in mind. So I'd, I'd probably say that your fans are going to cables are going to need to be uh, cleanly routed underneath as they normally would be. Now that is the roof panel on. It is nice and easy. Now we're going to do the uh, front panel. It comes off really easily which is just nice for cleaning but also inside there is a dust filter here and this dust filter is also completely removable. You can take it out in its entirety. Uh, I don't want to completely remove it, but it does come out. The reason why I don't want to completely remove it is then I've got to put it back together again. Anyway, the case does come with these three 140 millimeter fans. These are the only fans that it comes with, are the front ones. There is an extra one fitted in the back, which is this. Fraptal sent me uh, extra fans just so that I could uh, be able to show you with it and uh, I did test with the extra rear fan fitted just so that you understand the uh, what happened with the old performance side of things but again it's easy to refit the front it is idiot proof because I've done it it's easy on easy off no uh, fiddling no worrying um, now with the mesh down the side obviously the mesh goes into the roof panel and then it doesn't come into the back panel. I actually kind of wish it did because it would be a really nice, clean aesthetic then. Um, I think it's giving me kind of NZXT vibes if we'd had a solid bit here and then mesh. But anyway, uh, that's, that's just me talking about how I would prefer it. Now round the back, many, many lots of uh, ventilation for airflow. Uh, 140 mil fan I've fitted in there, but you can fit 120s as well. There's a fair bit of adjustment there as well, so you can push it right to the top if you want, but loads of vents everywhere else as well. So those three 120s at the front can exhaust out the back really nicely. Also, quite weirdly, these bottom four vents here, you can fit an 80 millimeter fan to it. Now, 
I would never do that, but I understand there are people out there that just like to throw fans at everything. Maybe you've got older, very, very hot hardware. Um, I don't really know. It's an option, but it's just not an option I'd probably take advantage of. You've also got a nice little um, cable tie down at the bottom. It's a Velcro one so that you can clip all your cables down and keep everything looking lovely, lovely and tidy. Round the back. First thing we need to look at around the back is up in the top left hand corner and it comes with a fitted fan hub. Now it's not powered, it literally just passes the signal across them. You fit one of the cables into your CPU motherboard header or whatever fan header you want and then it will be mimicked across all of the fans. Um, so that is something that's quite nice. Loads of grommets around the back, that's also very nice. I like that a lot. It does also, you can fit massive motherboards in and that's why you get this such a large um, gap with the next lot of fans. It's like server motherboard kind of spec. Now, I have hidden them, but down in the bottom there are two hard drive mounts for 3.5 inch drives that you can fit, obviously 2.5s in there as well if you want, but they're the only physical 3.5 inch mounts in there but there are also two 2.5 inch mounts over here around the back should you wish to use them. I've obviously used this as like cable stashing area around here. Um, the other side with the hard drive mounts as well, so you can move them over. So there are one, two, three, four, there's five in total possible positions that you can flex them around, move them about. So there are options for you should you want to use them. Loads of uh, extra Velcro here to be able to clip your cables in, but there are also a lot of grommets and stuff scattered around as well, which is going to make cable tidying nice and easy. And I'm just going to put the side panel on. If I can, uh, come on, Tom, come on, there we go. I was making that look more difficult than was really needed. That was very much a TTL fail moment more than a case fail moment. Now, popping the mesh off, this bit on the inside, the grey, is still metal. It's got some chunk to it, but the mesh does pop if you push it. But nevertheless, it's a nice mesh panel. When we open the inside out, you do see this panel, and this only comes on the mesh uh, case for obvious reasons. If it was tempered glass, it wouldn't be able to work. Now this you can fit uh, two 120s or two 140 mil fans to for even more airflow. Just so if you want to kind of maxi chat it out, you've got uh, loads of air that you can direct at your graphics card. Now, I did say to you about server motherboards because you can have your motherboard come right the way out to here. It goes, so XL ATX would be about here. This has actually got motherboard mounts all the way out the side for huge, huge MOBOs for kind of like, like I said, server or very high end kind of workstation-y kind of environments. Now, in the front, as I said, there's 340 millimeter fans fitted. There is ample room in here to be able to get a 60 millimeter radiator. You can fit, obviously, because there's three 120s, you can fit a 420 millimeter radiator in the front. Uh, 360 if you want, 360 in the roof. Um, so there's a lot of room. Uh, it, also, if you think about it, you can have a 140 in the back, two in the side, three in the front, uh, and then you can have up to three 120s in the roof or two 140s in the roof. So you can build a system with many, many lots of uh, airflow. And just to zoom you in so you can see what I was saying about the motherboard mounts just over here, look. Lots of grommets. And then back down the bottom, there's a lot of meshing in front of that power supply as well. I've got it pointed downwards for the power supply because there is a dust filter in the bottom, but you could just as easily put it the other way. It really wouldn't make any difference. Wouldn't make any difference to airflow either. But the thing to keep in mind with this is there's a lot of room in here. You can go up to a 413 millimeter graphics card if you need it. 
Uh, it gets more complicated uh, if you start fitting uh, radiators and that sort of stuff in, it, it comes down. But as graphics cards are normally about 330, 350 at a push anyway, this is monstrous. What I do like is all the grommets around the outside of the motherboard, but there aren't any down on the uh, power supply cover, which I think is a bit of a shame. But in its defense, if you put grommets over there, you can see them through the mesh anyway. Uh, so it is a very big, open and clean looking case that can fit some monstrous hardware. Now, on to performance. We test uh, in three modes, and that is basically uh, 600 RPM, 1000 RPM, and then a max RPM. And uh, that's when we just chase the chase, uh, change the case fan RPMs. The graphics card stays at 60%. The CPU cooler uh, has a, uh, is wired into a SATA connector with a 9 volt step down, so those don't change. It's just up to the case to make the differences. Now, at 600 RPM, it wasn't particularly great. Uh, and I'll just say that it's, the fans are just not moving enough air very, very low down in the RPMs. Uh, and I say not great, but it's still midships. It's not an embarrassing test at all but it completely changes when we go up to a thousand rpm and all of a sudden it becomes incredibly competitive it's properly down there trading blows with a lot of the other big cases and what we do need to remember is i only fitted that extra fan in the back at this point there isn't any fans in the roof there's no aio in there like there is four fans and it did so very well and that is something that I would just like to kind of draw a great deal of attention to is it did do very, very well. There aren't any fans directed up at the graphics cards. There isn't like the 140s aren't like right at the end here, like blowing almost straight onto the CPU cooler. It's just breathed very nicely. But I think one of the things about this case more than anything else is there is a really nice airflow path out the back it is very clean and does just get the air in grab hold of the heat get the air out so it's a kind of simple approach keep it simple stupid and it has worked conclusion wise it's a very very good looking case uh, with a tempered glass panel which would be my favored option i think you can build a beautiful but grown up uh, rig in this. I think this might be one for the no RGB brigade or if you're like me I'm a white lighting guy so I might have some colour in my rig with uh, sorry with my graphics card or my CPU cooler or my memory and by that I mean the actual items are coloured not lit up and then I would just behind this panel here put a nice white LED to be able to light up my system and then I think that is understated to a point but still trying to show off your, um, your, your rig. But it is, I do think, quite a grown up uh, case if you're gonna build it for gaming. But it obviously has many, many options for it to be expanded into professional usage as well. And I'm not being funny, if I had a professional uh, usage for this, like where I had a real job, and uh, this was on my desk, I think I'd be really, really happy. Uh, so we'll just have to see how, um, many people end up do picking it up. And I was just trying to remove this to show you as well, that you can get many, many lots of extra access if you needed to when doing your, uh, if you were to be in installing radiators. It was something I forgot to do earlier on. Obviously, I'm always the professional. Anyway, there we go, Tom, come on. Right, so I really like the Fractal. Please let me know underneath. If you like the uh, North XL as well, I would love to hear your feedback. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you out. Ding! Love you, sis.